So let's suppose that he starts running towards the right, meaning that he starts running towards the direction of increasing x. Now, his position definitely changes as he runs. The rate at which his position changes with time defines what we call his velocity. In other words, his velocity is simply how fast he is running in that particular direction. Now, an easy way to study his motion is to make a video of him running. A video camera usually takes images at a constant rate. The rate at which a camera takes images is what we call the shutter speed. And for the camera that I'm using, the shutter speed is about 30 images per second. Now, every separate image is what we call a frame. So an easy way is for us to take separate images at equal time intervals of this guy running to the right. And let's see what we can make of it. So if we take separate images at different positions of him as he runs to the right, it will result in us producing these frames. In frame one, he is still at his initial position. In frame two, he is at position four. In frame 3, he is at position 8. Now, keep in mind that these are different frames showing a snapshot of the running man at a particular point in time. What if, what if we edit the video and then superimpose the frames on each other? The edited image showing his position at several equally spaced instants of time is what we call a motion diagram. So if we do that, we will have a diagram like this. So this is an edited video that shows the running man at different positions at equally, remember that the time interval between each position is the same. Um, if you notice, so what we can do is, this is his position at t equal to 0. This is his position at t equal to 2. This is his position at t equal to 4. This is his position at t equal to 12. And this is his position at t equal to 16. Now, what you will notice is the fact that the distances between each dot, now each dot represents his position at a particular instant of time. And the time difference between any two positions is the same. Which means that if we look at how the distances between the dots are spread out, we can tell if he is speeding up slowing down or just running at a constant space. But looking at this diagram, the distances between each dot is the same, which means that he is running at a steady speed. Now we can then include arrows between each dot to signify his displacement. This here will signify delta R. We call this diagram a motion diagram that actually represents his position as a function of time and, demos and, and it actually describes picturally how his motion varies with time. So another way for us to represent his motion is to use graphs. Now, Motion graphs are drawn in such a way that time always occupies the x-axis or the horizontal axis. In this case, we are going to draw a graph of position. A 
against time. This is time in seconds. This is his position measured in meters. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So at t equal to one, at remember that at t equal to, he starts moving at x equal to one. So this will be around here. At x equal to four, his time is two. That is around there. At x equal to 8, his time is 4. At x equal to 12, his time is 6. So if we draw a graph, The graph will look like that. You see that the graph is a straight line signifying that the position increases at a steady speed at, at a steady rate as the time increases. In other words, he is moving with a constant velocity. So we have seen two ways by which we can actually represent the motion of an object. We can represent the motion of an object using motion diagrams or we can represent the motion of an object using motion graphs using motion graphs and both will come in handy